Hey there guys, it's Paul Archer from Drosgrader.com and this time around, as promised, I will review the JJRC Rocket 360 which is a drone that's very similar to the Lishi toys I reviewed not long ago. And let's do a small comparison between the two. This one right here is a little bit cheaper, but is it worth it? Both drones look very similar in shape and both have a very low gravity point to take more stable footage. If you want a detailed comparison between the two, check out my article on dronesgear.com, link is in the description. You can also check my complete review on the Red Lishi toys over here. Now let's review this baby and see what's in the box. It comes in a white hard foam package, nothing special. This is the foldable drone, looks solid and pretty well made. Next we have a complete set of instructions. The transmitter, that doesn't look so bad either. And the usual accessories. 4 spare propellers, 4 probe guards, a USB charger and a screwdriver. Oh, and a really nice phone holder. I like how this holds the phone very tight in place. Let's get a closer look at the drone. The foldable design makes for a very compact drone about the same size as the L6059. Yeah, I really hate these stupid Chinese names with numbers and stuff. Let's just call it the red one. It has an on and off button and three LEDs below it that show how much battery is left. Both of these drones come with brushed motors, but the red one has these four dampeners that reduce shock to the camera. If I remove the center hatch, we can find the battery slot and a 1000 mAh battery with a JST connector. This one should hold in the air about 8 or so minutes. The landing gear is pretty small, so expect the drone to fall sideways many times. Actually, pretty much every time when landing. But good thing the motors can stop automatically if they feel resistance. I prefer launching it from my hand with no landing gear whatsoever. You can catch it easier because the main body is far away from the props. The camera can be adjusted before flight, unlike the red one that can be adjusted while flying from the controller. The controller feels pretty good in hand and it is relatively small. It takes 4 AA batteries and the sticks are responsive. It's good that there are indications next to each button for what they do. Starting from the top left, we have the speed switch. Changing between the three speed modes, the top right button is a one key motor arm and one key landing button. In the middle there is the on and off button and on the right side there are trimming buttons. These are very necessary for this quadcopter. The first moment I put it in the air, it started going straight in a direction and I had to trim it considerably. Here's how it works. Let's say your drone goes to the left by itself. Then you press the right trimming button and hold it until it flies relatively steady. On the left side there's a bunch of commands next to each other. There's the photo video button on top, but you can do these commands from the app too. Left, there's a very interesting high speed circling mode that has two faces. If you press once, the quad will rotate very fast in the same spot. But if you press and hold it, it will do a wider rotation like this. I really thought this feature would be useless. And it is. But it's very fun to see it spin like that. Pretty entertaining, I must say. However, if you don't press the button again to get out of this flying mode, the drone will continue to fly like this even after you stop it. The button on the bottom is for headless mode, but in my experience this doesn't work almost at all. I'm frankly scared to use it with this drone. But if you don't use headless mode, I guess you don't care anyway. And on the right, although it's a return to home sign, it actually works as an emergency stop button if you press it for a few seconds. The drone can also be controlled from the standard JJRC app just by using the phone, which will make for a lighter travel package because you'll only take the drone with you. Let's finally talk about the camera and how well this quadcopter can fly. Well, let me tell you it's not that amazing, but it's okay I guess, however if we compare it with the red one, it's obviously way inferior. If it was just a camera, I would probably let it go. But the first time I've flown it, I lost control of it and hit a nearby car. And I'm not really a beginner. The frame rate of the video says 25 FPS, but it's way less smooth than the other one and lower quality overall. I had a lot of accidents with this drone, but on the second flight, after I calibrated the gyros, things went a little bit smoother. It wasn't drifting crazy like before, but I still had some problems controlling it here and there. Even if it wouldn't have any problems in flight, I still would think that it's more worth it to get the L6059 drone because it has a way better camera. 
because it does everything better and it's just a little more expensive. There are links to both in the description and also a coupon code for 18% off on your order. By the way, the pictures taken with this drone are not really bad at all. I actually like to fly it nowadays because of the auto rotation feature and just because I don't really care if I crash it. But if you want a better camera drone, then you know my recommendation. Take the other one. If you're not convinced yet, then check the comparison down in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to be in touch with the latest releases out there. And trust me, I will be sincere and tell you what sucks and what not. See ya later, alligator. See ya later, alligator.